What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on to the next video, the next example for the inverse of a function. We have to find the inverse of the function x plus 5 over 2. And just like the first example, I'm going to show you how to do it in the four different ways. So I kept all of the format written now just for convenience sake. And then number four I'll add after we do number three. So the first way is to do with the table of values. So let's make a table of values for the function. And let's pick uh, x values, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. It doesn't necessarily have to be these. You could pick whatever you want, but I'll just stick to these for now. So if we plug in negative 2, we'll have negative 2 plus 5, which is 3. And then 3 over 2 is 1.5. So I'll keep this in decimal. So this will be 1.5. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4 over 2 gives us uh, uh, 2. And then 0 plus 5 over 2 gives us 2.5. And then we'll have 3 and then 3.5. By the way, notice that this here is a line. So it's in a bit of a weird format, x plus 5 over 2. But notice if we split this up, split this fraction up, we would have x over 2, which is the same as 1 over 2x plus 5 over 2. So notice it's in y equals mx plus b form. Thought I would point that out. So we got the table for the function. So now let's get the table for the uh, inverse. So the table for the inverse would just be all of these reverse. So it'd be 1.5, negative 2, 2 and negative 1, 2.5 and 0. Uh, 3 and 1, and then 3.5 and 2. Right, so this would be the table of values for the inverse, and we're actually going to graph this in number 3. Now, if you were to do it algebraically, what we got to do is we have to interchange the x and y values, and then we have to isolate for y. So f of x equals x plus 5 over 2. Let's rewrite that as y equals x plus 5 over 2. And let's interchange the x and y. So we'll have x equals y plus 5 over 2. So this will be over 1. Now let's cross multiply. We're trying to isolate for this y here. So 2 times x is 2x. And then 1 times y plus 5 is just y plus 5. And then uh, if we isolate for the y, we would bring the 5 over. So we'd have 2 uh, y equals 2x minus 5. So let me write that. y equals 2x minus 5. I just brought that over. And then um, we can leave it like this, proper format. Remember, that's the inverse notation. So it's equal to 2x minus 5. So that is the inverse of that function. Notice it's a line as well. And then number three, what we're going to do is we're going to graph the function and graph the inverse as well. So we're going to use these two tables here. So I made a scale here. Let's go up by uh, 0.5. So this would be 1, 2, 3. And then let's actually add another one. That will be 4. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Got negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So let's start off with the function first. So we got negative 2 and 1.5. That would be uh, right here. Then we got negative 1 and 2 up here. 0, 2.5, 1 and 3. and then 2 and 3.5. So this here ends up being a line. So this here is f of x. And then if we're to graph the inverse, we could plot these points. Now these points correspond to this function, this line 2x minus 5 right there. So we got 1.5 and uh, negative 2, so 1.5, negative 2, that's down here. Then we got 2 and negative 1, which would be over here. 2.5 and 0, 3 and 1, 
and then 3.5 and 2. So this here is another line. Perhaps not the best drawing there, but that is the line 2x minus 5. So if this kept going, it would go through that y-intercept, that b value of negative 5. So this here is the inverse. And if you notice, this and this are reflections of each other over the line y equals x. As I mentioned, the function and the inverse are reflections of each other over the line y equals x, meaning that you're just switching the x and y values. So for example, this value 0 and 2.5 gets reflected to here, 2.5 and 0. Or this value here, negative 1 and 2, gets reflected to 2 and negative 1, right there, this to there. Right? So all of the points are reflections of each other over that line, y equals x. And then the last way to do this is we could reverse the operations in reverse order. So we could do it with words. So notice that um, if we take the x value of the function, so right now we're working with the function. Actually, I'm not going to write that here. Working with the function, so we have x, which is our input. What are we doing with that x value if we follow bed mass? So we're adding 5. And then once we've added 5, we're going to divide by 2. And then that will give us our f of x, which would be our output. And remember, for the inverse, we got to go in reverse order, and we have to reverse the operation. So we would start with our x value here. So this would be our input. And we're going in this order now. So instead of dividing by 2, what would be the opposite of that? It would be multiplying by 2. And then next, adding 5, the opposite, the reverse of that is subtract 5. And then we'd end up with our inverse. This would be our output. And notice that this here corresponds to what we got. We have our x value, our input. We multiply by 2, and then we subtract 5. And then we end up with our inverse. So multiple ways to do it. x plus 5 over 2, the inverse of that is 2x minus 5.